It's not easy to keep optimistic with everything that's currently going on in the world. But did you know your brain is actually hardwired to look on the bright side of life? Psychologists have found that 80% of people have what they define as an optimism bias. And that's regardless of whether they believe themselves to be more pessimistic or realistic. And this optimism bias might be playing an important role in how this whole pandemic pans out. The optimism bias is our tendency to underestimate the likelihood of negative events, such as our likelihood of experiencing disease or being in an accident, and overestimating the likelihood of positive events, such as, for example, economic success and professional success. People are, are learn quite well when you give them good information. When you tell them, oh, you know, if, if they're a young individual and you say, you know, this is not going to affect young individuals as much, we really quickly update our beliefs. However, when you give people unexpected negative information, they don't learn as much. So if I tell you as a male, you're actually more likely to have the virus than a female, you would say, well, okay, I'm washing my hands and so on. You won't update your beliefs as much. So there's a clear change in how you learn when you get positive and negative information. And as a result of that, you then generate the optimism bias, right? You go throughout the world getting positive and negative information, you learn a little bit more from the positive than the negative, and so that creates these optimistic bias expectations. We um, looked into brain activity to see what exactly is going on, and we found indeed that when you encode information that's worse than expected, the frontal parts of your brain are not encoding it as precisely, it's noisier, so to speak, than when you're encoding information that's better than expected. And because the way that the brain is kind of encoding things a little bit noisier when the information is bad, then you're not able to update your belief as precisely. So is this optimism bias directly affecting our behaviour during the pandemic? Could it be why young people so quickly latched on to the information that they might be at less risk than older people? Or perhaps why you keep having to call your parents to convince them that this is more serious than normal flu? We're bombarded by the evidence, and yet we still think, it'll never happen to me. There are studies suggesting that indeed there's a clear optimism bias. So for example, we asked, do you think you're more or less likely to have the coronavirus in the future than someone of your age and gender. And people at every age said they're less likely on average. And the question, does that um, affect people's behavior? Our answer is yes. Uh, we have data that we just collected that shows that yes, um, your, your estimated risk of how likely you are to have the virus is um, affecting your behavior. However, there is, um, there is actually a positive angle as well, which is we also find that whether you're complying with uh, the recommended behaviors is a lot to do not only with how you view your own risk, but how you view other people's risk. And here we find a clear effect of what we call um, private optimism but public despair. So people tend to be optimistic about their own health in light of the coronavirus. However, they do think that this virus is a danger to humanity. And they are anxious um, about the health of, the, of their loved ones. And those things very much impact their likelihood of complying with the correct behaviors in order to um, avoid infection. Now, the question may be why, um, and the way I always answer that is it probably boils down to a sense of control. Optimism is very much re related to the sense of control. If I think I have control about what's you know going to happen to me, I'm optimistic. I don't think I have control over what's going on in the world, and so I'm not so optimistic about those issues. And that's how these two things can um, live side by side at the same time. This optimism bias can benefit us in a crisis. Underestimating our risk can have positive effects on our mental health, such as reducing our anxiety. As can underestimating how long this is going to affect us, which may even make us more likely to comply to new rules. Understanding how this optimism bias works is key to influencing people's behaviour, and it might also help us be better prepared for some of the challenges that are going to lie ahead. We can use this bias to change behavior. That means you can go along with how the brain works in order to change people's behavior. For example, highlight the positive, right? Highlight what is the goals, which are positive, instead of focusing on the negative and trying to change people's behavior with fear and fret while they're saying, well, you know, I'm not really under risk. You don't necessarily change your perception. So the idea here is that you're not telling yourself 
well, um, I need to change the way that I look at this. I, I need to uh, believe that I have enhanced risk. I need to believe that this will take much longer because it's very difficult to change your perceptions, even if you wanted to. It's almost impossible, but you can use it to change your behavior. You can say, okay, I know my perception is probably wrong. I can't really change it, but then I can, given that, change behaviors. And it's very good to have some kind of policy and rules on how to do that on an individual level, on a company level, on a government level.